Hi everyone, welcome back to Game MakerCast. It's Mickey, and in this video, we want to talk about creating a field of view or ray casting out from an enemy's position. You can see here we have a demo level where one enemy is in debug, the guy up here, and other enemies right here are not in debug. However, if they're able to see you, they will get an exclamation mark over the head. So if I go over here, this guy stops spinning we can see that there's an exclamation mark going over his head and the red lines are drawing basically what he sees so he's detecting me there. Um, so we're going to switch over to the unfinished product which is this guy here where the guys just randomly spin around and we're going to actually start coding some of this ray casting stuff. Now I find it easier to work with the draw event in these situations. The reason being is because we can draw out the rays and we can see them and so we kind of we can kind of debug what's going on. So I kind of follow this standard in my create event. I have uh, I have the randomize, but the next angle and next time. So this is going to be the random position here. And then I just basically set the alarm zero, and all that does is choose the next random angle, uh, which then gets the difference and then resets the alarm. So it just keeps going back and forth. The debug in the draw here, this actually comes from the variable definitions, and you may see me using this a lot. So this just allows me to go into the room, and any enemies that I have, I can double click and go to variables, and then for this specific one, I could say that is debug is set to true. And therefore, when the code runs for that specific entity or specific object, it's going to come into this if statement. So what we're going to be doing is basically taking a point in this enemy and start drawing a ray out. Now there is a bunch of math that you can do, but we're going to keep it pretty simple and we're just going to stick to the basics here. So if debug is set to true, this is where we want to start drawing our ray out. And like I said, we'll start with the draw event and then we'll move everything into the step event. So what we want to do first is let's add a couple different variables. The first variable we want to say add underscore angle and this is going to be the amount of degrees that we're going to add to each ray. So we're going to add five degrees in a random position and next we're going to say which angle direction are we adding. So this is going to be in between negative one and, and one. So this will either be to the left or to the right and actually let's say uh, five degrees and finally just to keep things simple i'm going to create a dir short form for direction and i'm just going to set it to the image angle of the specific enemy that we're on now a couple other variable definitions we have a ray count and then the ray length <coughs> and then the ray length the ray count is going to be how many rays are going to be drawn from the enemy and then the ray length is going to be in how many pixels out is the ray going to be drawn. So I want to loop through each ray and draw it out to the maximum length. So we could say for VAR rays equals zero. And then make sure that rays is less than our ray count. Then we want to just increase the rays by one. And that's our first for statement right there. So we're going to loop through, in this particular instance, three different rays. And then next we want to go, basically we're going to draw a dot in every single pixel until we hit something. So this is why uh, ray casting can be very precise, is because you're actually going to check every single pixel. Uh, you can make this a lot faster by skipping some pixels, but we'll leave that on the side. So in here we'll have another for statement, so we'll say for VAR, let's say line length, let's set it to zero, and then make sure our line length is going to be less than our ray length. And then we'll just say line length plus plus. And now we'll head into our four statements here. And I'm actually going to pull this over and make it a little bit bigger here. So inside our four statements, what we need to do is we need to come up with the next position that we're going to draw our ray in. Now we know that our enemy is in a certain position, so we have access to X and Y. 
However, we're going to have to use a function called length drx and length dry to get the next position in the line. If we check out the manual on these functions, you can see they give a pretty good example of what we want to do. We're basically drawing an array here and we're going to be going up the line. So we need the x and y coordinates of this line per se in order to draw the dot. So let's create two variables. Let's see var x x equals x plus the length dr. And what we want to do is we want to travel up that line. So we're going to travel up the line length and then we're going to pass it what direction we're traveling in and we can do the same with y we just have to say y plus length dr let's just copy that line in and that's it that's pretty much the entire code that we need there now because we are drawing this let's actually do a little bit of coding which you probably wouldn't be doing in the draw event here but what we need to do is we need to say if position underscore empty at x x and y y so if there is a empty position and we actually want to say equals false so if there is not an empty position at our x and y coordinates along our line then we need to check to see what we hit now in our case we have a wall and we have a player so let's actually just start with the wall so we could say if instance place x x y y and object wall if that equals false then we know that we've hit the wall so what do we want to do well let's draw set color and let's set it to c underscore red and then we're just going to draw a circle at the x and y position of our line give it a radius of five and it is not outlined now at this point our line has hit a wall, so I do not want to have it continue going and checking for other things. So I could just say break out of this particular for statement. So if our middle ray hits something, it's gonna break out of this one and then just go on to the next ray. Now, the only real thing that we have to do after all this, once we draw it and we check the position, it's underneath here, we have to draw, set, color, We'll set it to C line because we're in debug. And then all we want to say is draw point at the X and Y position of our line. Now, like I said, we also have at the top, we have this add angle and angle direction. So we need to switch between left and right. And then we also need to add the angle onto our ray. So we'll say our direction plus equals our add angle, so five times whatever ray we are on. So rays is our variable up here. So obviously five times zero is gonna be zero times our angle direction. So all this is gonna say for the first one, the direction is gonna be adding zero. So that's gonna be dead center in our enemy. For the next one is gonna either be to the left or right, five degrees. And then finally it will switch back to the other side. In order to switch back, we just have to say our angle direction is going to be times equals minus one. So if we do this, and I'm just going to double check that I have this guy set to debug, and hopefully I do, and I do. And actually, let's set this guy also to debug here. So we'll set him to debug, except this guy, oh yeah, he had, let's do eight lines coming out. So when I hit F5, hopefully everything is going to load up, and we should see not a lot of things happening okay so let's quickly go back into our code and see what we missed here let's go all the way up here and i can see right here the instance place it doesn't return true or false it returns either no one or it returns the instance id so we want to change this to no one all right let's try this one more time hopefully we'll have some lines coming out and you can see that we do so you can see that this guy over here, he only has three, and that guy I'm gonna assume has eight without counting, and that guy probably has about eight too. And you can see that when they collide with the wall here, the red circles happen and then the line kind of stops. So that is the basics of our code. If we wanted to add, say, our player, want it to be detected, all we would have to do is copy this if statement here, and we could paste it below and say, you know what, we're going to check for the object underscore player. Now when we run our game, 
anytime our enemies see our player, you can see right there, we'll get that red dot on our player. And you can see it's very precise and it will pick up you know, the corners and everything like that. So that will allow us to do some uh, really cool levels. Anyway, so how do we make this into something where our enemy, once they see the player, uh, they can, you know, they can be alerted and maybe walk towards our player. Well, we're basically going to be using the exact same code that we have here, but only with a little bit of difference. So why don't we go ahead and copy all of our code that we have here and go over to the step event. And let's just go ahead and paste it in and I'll select everything and hit shift tab to put it over. Now we've already done all this stuff here. We've done the rays, we've drawn everything out, except we don't really want to be drawing anything here and we don't want to be drawing anything on the player. So if we hit the wall, we don't want to have anything be alerted. All we want to do is break out because we've hit something solid like the wall. If we've hit the player, I have a variable already set called C underscore player, and I'm going to set that to true. And then I'm going to break out of the line. And then underneath here, we don't need to draw these lines. So we're just cleaning up the code. Now, all this is doing is in the draw event at the very top, you can see that we had our draw self, just like everything else. But then at the very bottom after debug, we have C player. So if we've seen the player, then we're just going to say draw sprite and put in the exclamation mark. Now, the only thing that is missing here is in the step event, I have to make sure that we set the C player to false every time we go through or else it's always going to be set to true. Now, if I hit a five, we have that variable. We have all of the lines being drawn. So if one of these guys picks me up, you can see that a sprite is drawn above their head and you can see that the ray stops going. And it's the same with this guy down here. And it would be the same with this guy over here. So it would be up to you once they've detected the player to move towards them. So you could easily just say, you know what, if we detect the player, let's actually write a little bit of code here. So we could say if C player, then what do we want to do? Well, let's point direction. We'll use our current X and Y, and then we want to use the player. So we'll have to make sure we get this instance. So let's see here. Let's create a new variable called target and we'll set it to no one. And let's see, C player set to true. So we'll say target equals, and let's grab the player instance that we have seen. So if we could say, if we have a target, then what do I want to do? Then I want to say point direction using my X and Y coordinates versus my targets, X and Y coordinates. I want to point towards them. And then all I really want to do is I want to move towards a point and let's move towards the targets X and Y point. And this is, this is cheating here. We'll just use a speed of three and yeah, that should be it. And that will have this guy stay with the target, which is our player for the whole thing. Um, so you can see that this guy is going to move because he saw it, although he is turning around because we do have the, um, we didn't tell him to stop doing anything. So if I actually want to speed up my game, I can go to room and let's take off debug because we don't need all of those lines coming out. Uh, variable show true and this guy, make sure he is off. Now, and I run my game, I should be able to get caught by these different guys here. So if this guy sees me, look at that, they're moving towards me, same with this guy. And I uh, would be in big trouble here. So anyway, that is how you can easily accomplish a field of view or ray casting with enemies. I would like to thank the following users on Patreon. We have Borman, Paul, Victor, Jean-Pierre, Pixel Giant, Wayne. Uh, the support is just incredible. Thank you guys and girls so much. It really means a lot to me.